ponies. <laughs> They're everywhere. <laughs> And the dog is licking ears. I run a funny farm, I swear. I'm on chore duty today, it's Sunday. It's my first real day back since being away for a few days. So I always look forward to chores, just like shut my brain off, do chores. And I wanted to bring you guys with me so I don't shut off my brain. I wanted to do something a little bit different today. I'm going to feed. And while I'm feeding, I'm going to let you know just how much feed I feed my sheep every day. That makes chores a little funner. A little funner? A little more fun when I can talk to you guys while I'm doing it. The thing about feeding, it really does change depending on the ewes life cycle. So I have three main life cycles. One is when they're early pregnant, which is like early gestation ration. That is the same as my dry ration or just my maintenance ration. My flush ration is when I'm getting ready to breed, when I'm breeding, and for a few weeks after I pulled the rams out. Starting tomorrow, I'll be feeding a close-up ration and those are kind of a late gestation ration. And my fourth ration is a, lacta a lactating ration, which I'm not feeding right now. All right, all right. They're hungry. Good morning, my boys. Always greeting me with such love, aren't you? Yes. You're becoming more friendly than my, my sweet Billy. Hello. Everyone is so jealous, you guys. Feeding would be a lot easier if I had fuel in the feed cart. I'm just gonna kinda show you my logistics here. I have a feed sheet that I have here by my mixer because this is what we kinda look at as to when we're putting the feed in the feed cart uh, to know which pens are which and I'll go over that in a sec. So we have one by the mixer, one in the loader because we need one to know how much I actually need in this mixer. This mixer is called a total mix ration mixer and it's got a big, I'll show you that too, a big auger, single auger, and it mixes all your ingredients together. So I tell people if you envision like a, a huge KitchenAid that would do a thousand kgs of feed, that's what that is. And then I can just take out cart by cart. I have a scale on this and I can just um, subtract based on how much I need in each cartload for each pen. So I have a scale for my mineral because it needs weighed out. So that's just my scale there. Um, here's my mineral. We grow all our corn, all our hay. Uh, we feed all that. So this is just some dry corn in a bin. Uh, I keep, we fill that probably once a month at least. And then in that corner, we're not using it right now, but that's where I keep my bulk creep feed for when my lambs are here with their mom. I like it mixing as I'm dumping in the feed because I want it really mixed up well. The more mixed you can get a ration, the less sorting my sheep will do. Sheep, sheep have such good little mouths. They say a sheep can pick pepper out of fly poop. feed sheet. It's so simple right now because I only have two rations going. I have my dry ration, which is my maintenance ration, and I have a flush ration. Uh, and so the whole right side gets flush, the whole left side gets dry. So this is a pretty easy, the easiest feed sheet I will have. That's going to change in like weeks. It's not going to be that easy for that long, so I'm kind of loving it. We are going to start with my maintenance ration. I have 201 ewes on this ration, and uh, so that's going to look like 181 kgs of corn silage, 945 kgs of haylage, 4 kgs of mineral and that's all going to be a combined amount of 949 kgs to the left side of this part. Okay, 
my first scoop is corn silage. We have everything on this pad. It's an asphalt pad and we store all our feed in what are called egg bags. Again, with the plastic, I hate the plastic, but it does store this feed so great. Uh, we just have not committed to a bunk system, a bunk style system yet, based on the fact that I just don't have enough sheep, I don't think, to keep the front of each uh, bunk fresh enough. Uh, as you can see, even in my corn silage, the sides, unless you keep them like folded in all the time, they start to get molds on the side and then your animals can get sick. Well, same goes with a bunk. If you can't keep that full, the entire face fresh every single day, uh, then you start getting into some molds and you can and you can use, lose animals that way. So I just haven't made the switch over to bunks because I don't think, I think I need more sheep to really make it worth the go unless I have really, really small bunks. So yeah, we have corn silage and we have uh, first cut haylage and second cut haylage to my right. That is the situation on our feed storage. I'm gonna go dump this load and then I'll run over and take a few buckets of the haylage, mix it all up, add the mineral, feed my use. things you find in your mineral pail. <laughs> They're everywhere. It's okay, little birdie. Okay, let's have a look at what this looks like mixing, shall we? I'm on to my flush ration now, so I'm going to be mixing 213 kgs of corn silage, 504 kgs of haylage, 107 kgs of the dry corn in the mix, and six kgs of mineral in the mix uh, for a total of 840 kgs. This whole group is 400 kgs, basically split into three. I'm just gonna feed them all as one, so 400 kgs on this side of haylage, corn silage, dry corn, mineral. They are all fed, it does not take long. It takes longer when I'm filming. But with this, with just having two rations, I would say oof, easily I could feed in half an hour. It doesn't take long at all. This is like the greatest time ever for feeding. And the dog is licking ears.
I run a funny farm, I swear. So I did talk a little bit in my weaning video about these ewes that I just dried off and uh, I do have the option this year to feed dry hay. My preference to drying off ewes is, is dry hay that was fairly mature in the field. So, you know, that lower protein, the alfalfa was in full flower, fairly mature. Uh, we definitely had that with our third cut, if you remember, because it was kind of a gong show, getting it off. Even if it's just for a week when you're drying them off, and then after that, just switch to this lower maintenance ration. Now we're gonna go across the road. I'm gonna feed over there. Uh, feeding over there for actual amounts, that's gonna be a bit tricky because I don't have a scale on my intake bin, so, so my bulk corn bin and my bulk pellet bin, I don't have a scale on it. And I've always got lambs coming in and going out over a given year. So I can make a very educated guess. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna feed it, show you the feed, and then I'm gonna run to the office and try to figure out if I can give you how much feed I feed in a year, and then uh, give you an idea of how many, how many lambs I've, I, I would have going through that barn in a year. Even that, the lambs consumption uh, increases and decreases depending on where they are. So when they're first coming in, uh, it takes them a bit to get on the feed and they're a smaller animal. And as they get bigger, they definitely go up fast and hard. I wish I had a more of a, kind of more of a handle on the feed across the road. A little trickier uh, and it would require a little more maybe technology over there. We are in the other barn. My lammies are in there and a little bit of logistics out here. From my feed company, I do buy a, a pellet. It's a supplement pellet, so it's not a prepared, necessarily a, a fully prepared pellet. It is a supplement, so it's, supplement means it is partnered with corn. Pretty close to 80% of, of the total mix is corn. And then, so I get the feed truck, he fills usually about three ton. I put, I think it's a four ton bin. I usually put about three ton in here. The corn bin, seven ton eight ton I can't remember exactly what that is so uh, and then the, it's got the intake augers at the bottom I can run it all by switches on the inside which I'll show you it goes into a proportioner uh, and the the corn kind of runs when it's on it just runs kind of continuously and then the pellet really does just turn off and on because you want a, a, a lot smaller proportion amount of the pellets in the total mix if you kind of get where I'm going with that. So this is basically all the equipment plus the proportioner inside that that we mix the the lamb ration with and then I also feed free choice hay so that's why I do need hay bales. Before I start talking about feed I'm gonna quiet these animals up because they always act like I never feed them and they have feed in front of them all the time. So I'm gonna sweep up the hay, maybe top up the hay, get the feed going, and then when it's quiet, I'll come back to you and have a little combo. Cool? Cool. This is the proportioner. So the corn bin outside, like you saw, was on that side, and the pellets are on that side. It runs kind of, here's the, kind of the gears. I guess it's not a gear, but it runs these two meet up and that's that kind of gear runs this auger and this one runs the pellets but as you can see there's only about half of them pushed out and we measured we calibrated this based on weight so we wanted the the right calibration between the two I think I have a video on that I have to find where that is to show you guys how we did that uh, we use something called the Pearson Square to figure this out, the proportion. I'm going to start this and show you what this looks like. So this is my cross auger. And that's got to go for anything to work. And then this is the machine. So there's always a little bit of... Uh, this is kind of always full of corn and this is always full of pellets and there's a pressure a limit switch a pressure switch in here that when it goes below it it calls for this to run again so you can see how those two run together the little pegs hit the little pegs in there and that's what that's what kind of feeds the auger and then the corn and the pellets go up the auger cross the kind of the roof line 
and then down into each individ individual feeders and fill them up. And then I don't have to pail it, which is what I used to do. So I'll just show you these feeders. So, here's the little lip. And uh, the air is pretty good today, so it's not too gummy. Sometimes this lip can get gummy, so we just like to clean it out. I like to clean out any straw they've kicked in. Yeah. This is kind of the mix. So these are handy because I can put like a, a few days worth of feed in here. These are self-contained. The birds can't get in, the sheep can't get in, and then they just nibble from the bottom. So there's one here, one there, one there, and one there. Get up the way you guys tomorrow, hey? Getting big. Let's talk about the hay a little bit. I am really poor at keeping track of how many bales I feed in a year because it really depends on how big these bales are. Last year I bought all my bales, uh, so I could just see how many bales I bought, uh, what months I bought them for, and figure that out as well. It gets a little foggy in my brain because we've had cows, I've fed them to the, I was feeding them and I was feeding those bales in my ration, so I'm gonna guess that I feed about a bale of hay a week depending on how many lambs are in here. I figured out why my lambs were really loud. They had poo in their water bowl. So, thank God I checked those as much as I do because they were thirsty. <laughs> Always check your water. Because lambs are usually not loud unless something's wrong. Say hi to the people. Soon you'll see this man again. <laughs> I did figure out the feed, I think, as close as I can figure it out, and Mark help, had to help me because my brain doesn't work with conversion rates and all that stuff. Uh, he is working on his paper, you guys, and it is intense. He actually, uh, I feel really bad for him. He's got to put all his travels kind of into thought, and he's got hundreds of papers to kind of review and summarize so that's why you haven't seen him he's coming back out of hibernation soon okay i'm gonna eat lunch and then i'll uh share this stuff with you don't mind we haven't not unpacked still i'm gonna go through how much i feed these lambs across the road so these are again rough numbers what i did is i took how much i bought which was tw uh 12,200 kgs and because that's a 20 percent of the ration i figured out what the total was um, we mixed it with 48,800 kgs of corn, which is a total of 61,000 total kgs that got fed from April 1st, 2019 to March 31st, 2020. The problem is to figure out how many lambs were actually eating that all the time because I never actually ever had uh, like a balanced zero when I have lambs in and out because it's a continuous flow of lambs and it's a continuous flow of feed. Um, so I just did, basically what I did is just took how many lambs I sold between April and April 2019 and March 2020. Remember, sometimes they're in the middle of their cycle, like middle of their growth period over there and sometimes they're at the beginning and sometimes they're at the end. Uh, what I have here is I think I sold around 650 lambs in that 2019-2020 period. So again, these are just rough numbers, so don't please don't come at me saying my math is garbage because I know it is. 93.56 kgs per lamb that went through that barn. Um, and I figure it takes most of these lambs on average because there's some that go at three months and there's some that go at five months uh, when they're gone. So I just averaged it by saying they're about 60 days finishing over across the road because some are early and some are later. Uh, but for the most part, I would say they're probably two months over there. So uh, 93.56 kgs total per lamb over 60 days is about 1.56 kgs of grain per lamb per day, which is about 3.4, 3.5 pounds 
per head per day. That's a lot of feed. Even I had to keep doing the math over and over. I'm like, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. And then finally when I'm like, oh, over how many days, then it starts to make sense. I'm gonna cut grass and then I'm gonna go back to the barn and kind of finish off this video with what these feed rations are gonna look like, how much feed is gonna go out the door here in the next month or so. I'd love to show the shift in the life cycle so you guys can see kind of how that feed changes and the amounts change, because it's pretty interesting. Does not get lost on me that I spend three hours cutting grass when I have 400 sheep in my barn. Now that I'm dusty and dirty and full of grass, I thought I would grab my feed sheet and I would typically do this, I do this all on Excel, but since Mark is in the office, I'm gonna do this the old school way, I'm gonna do this by hand. As we're sitting right now, we are feeding per day, we're sitting just shy of 400 ewes, so 395. I've got another 20 something over in the other barn just ready to come over this week. So that's gonna increase it here a little bit again. Uh, so for 395 animals right now, we are feeding 1,793 kgs a day. So divided by, so I'm just gonna do this divided by the 395. So they're all getting about 4.5 kgs a day. The different groups are getting different amounts, but if you just did it on average, they're getting 4.5 kgs a day, which is about 10 pounds of feed a day for every you. I'm gonna give you all these amounts and I'm gonna tell you how much feed. I'm really just doing it out of curiosity. I'm not doing this so you guys are gonna go home and start feeding 10 pounds of feed to your use because all this is 100% depending on how your feed is testing. Your amounts, your feed quality, what you have to add to it, all depends on what you're pulling out of these fields. And I guess I never really talked about that. We, right now we're growing 50 acres of hay and we probably take off anywhere, it depends how many bags of corn silage we do, uh, but this year we're probably looking at about 10 acres of corn silage. Just for curiosity, that's what we're pulling off, um, you know, 60 acres of land that we've set aside for the sheep. So don't take these amounts and these rations, these are all custom rations that my feed company made for me uh, based on the ewe size and how many lambs they're having and like if they're lactating and um, how the feed is testing. So just three things to kind of keep in mind to not just carbon copy what I'm doing. All right, let me do some math. I'm gonna show you what I'll be feeding probably here at the end of September. Did some hen scratches. End of September, early October, I should have most of these used in the lactating ration, which is the highest cost ration, the highest amount ration. Uh, so I will have 568 kgs of that ration going out to those ewes. And the maintenance, I will have, I'll have some different ones on the maintenance, not the ones right now, but some different ones. And I will be feeding 619 kgs of that. And then for the flush ewes, I'll have another group on that and they'll be getting 870 kgs a day a day of that so in total that'll be 2057 kgs and right now i'm feeding what did i say i was feeding right now 1793 is what i'm feeding right now currently and that's going to go up to 2057 so it is going to draft drastically go up however i've got a few more ewes by then because those ewe lambs will be over here and if i don't lose any which Probably well. I'm at 4.5 right now kgs per U average, not each U. 
and that'll be going up to 4.9 almost a day. So it does, you can see how it does go up and down and inventory is a bit tricky to figure out when uh, they're always in a, there's always a different amount of use in, in each life cycle. Uh, so, so me as well as probably a lot of farmers just do average as, as close as you can to just average numbers. I thought this was interesting. I hope you guys did too. Kind of a nice Sunday distraction. So thanks for keeping me company and we will see you later this week. Take care.